You're listening to Boobies and Newbies, brought to you by the Frolic Podcast Network. This episode is sponsored by Lone Wolf, the latest anthology series from Kensington, which features stories from Diana Palmer, Rebecca Zanetti, and a favorite author of this podcast, Kate Pierce. Now, longtime listeners have heard me sing Kate Pierce's praise on this podcast many a times. Plus, you might remember a few promos for Christmas Kisses with My Cowboy, another anthology featuring both Diana Palmer and Kate Pierce. Y'all, this anthology features stories from three New York Times bestselling authors, each beloved for writing sexy romances with alpha heroes and strong, adventurous heroines. If you love realistic and compelling communities filled with complex characters, then you will love Kate Pierce. How about high-octane action and scorching sensuality? Enter Rebecca Zanetti. And then there's Diana Palmer, a name every romance reader, seasoned or newbie, is probably already familiar with thanks to her incredible record of best-selling books. I mean, we're talking about a powerhouse legend. Each novella in Lone Wolf revolves around a rugged man and his trusty wolf protector as an opportunity for happily ever afters arise. Filled with sizzling tension and well-drawn characters, and I'm talking both animal and human, this anthology is sure to resonate with readers everywhere. I, for one, devoured all three stories, though I have to say I was especially drawn to Diana Palmer's Colorado Cowboy, seeing as the hero is a wildlife rehabilitator. How dope is that? Lone Wolf is available now wherever books are sold, and summer's coming quickly, so grab yourself a copy before your next beach, camping, or road trip. Kick back and catch some rays. And now, back to the show. podcast that asks novice romance readers to think outside the dick in a box and brave the unbridled world of erotica. I'm your host, Kelly Reynolds, and today I am joined by Justin and Keita, co-hosts of the brand new podcast, Cooking for Reels. Cooking for Reels is the podcast that pairs tasty home-cooked meals with the movies that inspire them. And who better to have on the show during our month of yummy love than a few people I know appreciate yummy as much as I do. So please join me in welcoming my guests for today, Justin and Keita. Thank you for having me. Hello. Hello. I'm so excited. Thank you for having us. I'm here in the back. It's fine. (laughs) My dad. I'm so excited to have both of you here. We're we're excited we to be here. I love it. I love it. Well, and Justin is a newbie-ish, you know, kind of guest because he actually has been on the show before, although it's been a bit. It's been a bit and a half. Where was that? That was only like your first couple of episodes in, I think, right? Maybe second one? Yeah, it was. it was like the second or third episode. I remember... We were recording right around the 4th of yeah. July because there were fireworks going oh off fireworks. in the funny. background. He didn't have AC and it was a thousand degrees in his apartment <laughs> and he lived on like the third floor and it was just, it was so hot. All of the windows were open, but then we had to close them because of the fireworks. It was, and we were it was baking. a treat. We were all baking and the book took place in like winter so i was like oh i'm so jealous Ooh. yeah that was that was a good one i can't remember the title but it was um a kate meter irresistible you <gasps> oh my gosh you're a better host than i am you remember the title it's the last romance novel i read so mm-hmm. that's the only reason i remember justin i'm displeased no. wait <laughs> let me let me caveat I will say I've read some LGBTQ romance novels. Well, that counts. In between. Yeah. That does count. You are correct. But that was yeah, my... Yeah, why wouldn't that count? Well, because let's... I don't... Cons- I guess I wouldn't consider those books that I read pure romance. They were more mm. like novelly with some really steamy scenes in there. Mm. Oh. Okay. Okay. I guess that negates whatever... I don't know. <laughs> it's but a good like, thing I'm back on here to... to educate myself. Yeah, I was going to say like... It, it, 
and we'll probably talk about it when we get into the book, but, like, this one didn't have too many, like, I was about to say pornographic. Can I say pornographic on this podcast? I mean, you can, but I don't think of them as pornographic. I yeah, and I don't steamy. Yeah, steamy I mean, scenes. I, steamy. And I I love me some romance. I love me some erotica. So like this one felt very romance heavier than erotica. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree with Keita. This one read more like some of those LGBTQ books that I read. Unlike Irresistible You, which was definitely more. I felt more of the erotica. Kind well, of vibe. And there's absolutely a large portion of romance novels that are c- completely closed door romance where any kind mm-hmm. of sex happens off the page. You know, we cut to the next day, new chapter. Like a Twilight situation. Yeah, exactly. And so with this one, you know, it wasn't exactly a closed door romance because we do get sort of like the foreplay and like talking about putting on a condom and like him fucking her yeah. against the door. But yes. we don't get to see it. So I'm like, it, it's yeah. not a closed door, but it's not explicit. I'm wondering what the what the in-between word or phrase is to describe <laughs> that heat level. <laughs> it's yeah, uh, this door was... ajar with a chain attached. Door ajar. At, literally. I mean, honestly, let's literally. be real. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Maybe that's what yep. we'll start calling it. And I'll try to spread it like wildfire, you know, throughout the romance community is it's not closed door, but it's door open ajar. Perfect. Mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. There yeah, you go. Careful. There you go. Our, our word of the day, if you will. But... Let's Mm -hmm. talk about your podcast, which at the time that this episode is releasing, seems like your first few episodes will also be releasing. So let's first of all relish in that and the fact that you've done it. And uh, tell me and everybody listening about cooking, cooking for reals. Yes, yes. Cooking for Reels. And the Reels is R-E-E-L-S. So like a film reel. We really just Justin and I, we love food. We love movies. So we're like, um, we're entertaining. Let's talk about it (laughs) on record it. That'd be great. Um, so the, we take critically acclaimed movies and we watch them and then we try and figure out some sort of menu to go with it. But the best thing is Justin, you want to tell him, tell him what the best part is. Best part is, is we don't know what each other is cooking. (laughs) So if we watch a movie that has like a blatant meal in it and both Keita and I decide, you know what, let's try to replicate that meal. We'll have no idea until the recording and we show each other pictures of what we made. So far there hasn't been any uh like repeats or we made the same yeah. thing. Okay. We yeah. We take some yeah. liberties with the films and kind of either take something that's loosely inspired by the movie or something that's direct from the movie and try to replicate the dish. So it's been yeah. it's been fun so far. I like that. Mm-hmm. Well, and so what um you know again at this point you have only released a few episodes and so what are some of the movies either that you've already covered or like ones that you're looking to to cover and cook for in, in the upcoming episodes? We did we've done like The Dark Knight, Christopher Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. Ooh. Um I know. That one was a tricky one to figure out what it, to cook yeah, for. Yeah, it was surprisingly tricky um bonnie and clyde what else pinocchio will be our first one that is that's gonna kick us off oh my god what Uh, a the 1940s original though like from pinocchio Pinocchio, to dark knight to what was what was the other one bonnie Bonnie and clyde Clyde. bonnie and clyde oh my god (laughs) yeah so to to go off what kita said we were taking like the guardian imdb the hollywood reporter they're like top 100 movies of all time um that keeps increasing, so we're kind of throwing in some more movies that we kind of think should be on there as well. But right now we're kind of sure. sticking with the top 100. Uh, and we're kind of seeing like how many repeats there are, and then we'll put that in the list. So it is a wide variety, and we're trying to get a nice variety of genre, time period. Like It was made a lot of 1940s, 50s kind of 60s films and we're like all right let's throw in some 2000s in there yeah because i i think there's a lot of fantastic movies that have been made in the last you know 20 30 years like that i think you know anytime you read a list that are like those best of kind of things it's you always have to consider the source like there's there's so many times where i'll read a list of like the top you know um sitcoms that have ever been on tv and 
like 90% of them will have been from like the 2000s. And I'm like, well, okay, this tells me this is probably like a younger writer who's probably experienced most of these in their lifetime versus you'll read the same sitcom list from some other source and there's only modern family with everything else that's like the Dick Van Dyke show and the Mary Tyler Moore show. And I'm like, oh, okay, so this is like more curated for like my dad, maybe. (laughs) But, you know, both relevant. Yeah, I found... and we. Sorry, Kitty, go for it. No, no, no. We found so far that a lot of these movies that are on this list are movies that have really, like, revolutionized the film industry. Like, Citizen Kane, Casablanca were, like, some of the big ones, and Gone with the Wind that, like, really changed the way cinema was back then. But now it's like, okay, where are the ones that are revolutionizing film industry now? Where's the Promising Young Woman's? Where's the, like, Nomadland, Mm -hmm. Minari, Parasite? Like, I want to see those that are, like, broadening it and not just those certain films from the 40s and 50s that we see a lot on these lists. So that's why Keith and I are kind of throwing in, because we want to open it up to all genres and all categories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and and we also purposely chose lists, like, such as The Guardian that had more foreign, quote-unquote, foreign films or, like, different different language films like kind of we really want to make sure we have a diverse critically acclaimed list of films we're choosing from yeah nice broad spectrum well and I love too that you're not just choosing movies that are like about food like not that there's anything (laughs) wrong with movies about food I mean look at where we are we're talking about yummy love all month Mm -hmm. long on this podcast Mm -hmm. um and the book we're talking about today I mean is basically like food porn especially if you love Indian food so um no but I I do I because I'm just like thinking I'm like how the hell do you come up with a meal inspired by Dark Knight what are you making like fried bat wings like I just (laughs) I have no idea and so I'm super curious and excited and I absolutely hope that there will be pictures and cooking demos because um your girl needs more food in her life always yeah, we'll definitely be posting photos along with the episodes when they're released. So you can check out our, our, our Instagram and Facebook for those posts as well. Nice. Is it going to be like a who wore it best, but like who cooked it yummiest? <laughs> maybe. Maybe yeah. we'll get there. We'll do some polls. <laughs> right? Peter will win hands yeah. down. That's oh. not true. That's not true. We I- both have our strengths. I was going to say, I don't know Keita's cooking, but I do know Justin's baking. And Justin's baking is delicious. And it's funny because I'm a savory baker. And so oh. I'm I'm all the breads. I'm the focaccia, the, the breadsticks, like all, all savory all the time. And so if I'm looking for something sweet, I definitely go to Justin. But I'm, I'm a savory kind of girl. Yeah, the other day I was mm. making an olive loaf, like a rustic bread with some olives in there. And literally, I was on the phone with Keita for... What, a good hour or two walking me through the fermenting process <laughs> and, like, all of this stuff. I was like, okay, uh, should the yeast look like this? <laughs> um, yeah, what, is it, what does it sound like? <laughs> that sounds fine, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, well, I'm going to put a pin in the conversation about bread because you better believe that that is going to play a huge part in today's conversation because that is I, – I, I mean – it, it almost seems like the book we're talking about today was, like, inspired by the pandemic because oh, of absolutely. all the bread baking that's right. happening in it. And you know what? It might have been. I have no idea because it is a relatively newer release. It could it could have had something to do with or at least the timing on it. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think I think this one will will touch a lot of people's hearts and stomachs when they Mm -hmm. read it so Mm -hmm. before we jump into that I do want to ask where can everybody find and follow and listen to cooking for reals all of our Instagram um, Facebook and Twitter I believe is at cooking for reals so again that's cooking f-o-r-r-e-e-l-s um and then we should be available wherever you can get your podcasts um again we are we're as you hear this, we it should be released. It should be available. So f- find us. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! And if not, yes. check in with yeah. our social and I, media and it'll point you to where to go. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And and I'll absolutely promote it because I'm super excited. I'm always happy to find a new podcast, especially because I feel like I've been slacking on the cooking front lately. So this might be like the kind of podcast I need to listen to 
as I'm cooking to like inspire me to do some cooking and you know stop ordering postmates <laughs> well and this will and hopefully ours will be good for you then because we do a lot of weeknight cooking is because we record usually during the week yes so uh-huh. only i think once did i make one that i was like this is so not a weeknight meal um <laughs> but other than that most of the stuff that we make is pretty easy and anyone can really try their hand at it that's mm-hmm. important. That's yeah. really important. So I am I am here for it. Well, I'm excited for you guys. And again, congratulations on the podcast. Thank I can't you. wait to listen. Mm-hmm. And uh, today is the perfect day to bring in the two of you, especially as I said, we were talking about bread, because this book is food porn mm. in a nutshell. I mean, it's whew, so good. But Today's book we're going to be talking about is Accidentally Engaged by Farah Haran and this contemporary fake dating romance, oh, <laughs> one of my catnips, was published <laughs> in March this year, 2021. It's available on Amazon for $9.99 Kindle edition, which is definitely not the cheapest purchase, although I will say along with a charming story, it does come with a few recipes at uh-huh. the end of the book. So that alone, I think, is worth the purchase. So um, I'm going to give everyone the quick synopsis for Accidentally Engaged, and then we will dive on in. So I'm going to do my very best to pronounce everyone's names as rightly as possible. Um, but we all know that I have a terrible um track record with names in general whether your name is you know steve or whatever so (laughs) this is me doing my best i promise rena manji doesn't love her career her single status and most of all her family inserting themselves into every detail of her life But when caring for her precious sourdough starters, Rena can drown it all out, at least until her father moves his newest employee across the hall with hopes that Rena will marry him. But Nadine's not like the other Muslim bachelors du jour that her parents have dug up. If the Captain America body and the British accent weren't enough, The man appears to love eating her bread creations as much as she loves making them. She sure as hell would never marry a man who works for her father, but friendship with a neighbor is okay, right? And when Rena's career takes a nosedive, Nadim happily agrees to fake an engagement so they can enter a couple's video cooking contest to win the artisan bread course of her dreams. Oh my god, I still have another paragraph, but like <laughs> if this isn't enough to like get you to read this book, like we've got fake engagements, we've got bread, we've got a couple's video cooking contest. I wh- Captain America Captain body. America yeah, with yeah. a British, British accent. Come on. Mm. Mm-hmm. She literally describes him as the brown Captain America mm. when she introduces him and I think they compare him to Jamie Oliver mm-hmm. like 30 times yes. throughout the book. So, yeah, there you go. That's not again. That should be all the incentive you need. But if not, here's one more paragraph at um, as cooking at home together brings them closer. Things turn physical. But Rena isn't worried. She knows Nadim is keeping secrets, but it's fine. Secrets are always on the menu where her family is concerned. And her heart is protected. She's not marrying the man, but even secrets kept for self-preservation have a way of getting out, especially when meddling parents and gossiping families are involved. <gasps> oh, boy. Yeah, this this is something where um, I do. I want to ask you both if this was a movie that you were covering for Cooking for Reels. What would you cook after reading this book? Well, it's very funny because on one of the episodes, I'm not going to tell you which one, you're going to have to listen to them, but I made <laughs> lentil soup and home home cooked bread and I was like, "Oh my gosh, mm. this is perfect." Also, yeah. Rena is me. I am Rena. Like all the foods she was making, all the breads, even down to my favorite pie, legitimately 
You can ask anyone. Every year for my birthday, I make a sour cream apple pie. Oh my gosh, you are Rena. I, the little characteristics were insane. Like Rena loves gin. She has to stand on a little stool to knead her dough. I was like, yeah, I'm all of this four and a half feet you. tall, so I gotta get up on that dough to knead it. So I was like, this am I? Did, did I like release my diary to this author? Like, what's happening? <laughs> Do you know I must have highlighted at least three passages within the first chapter where I was like, oh, okay, I very much identify with this woman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think um, what the first one was when she talks about like Sundays are a day of rest and relaxation, but not for her. And I'm like, mm-hmm, get mm-hmm, it. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm with you. Um, and then the second one was when she started talking about how um, she, I mean, the story opens where it makes you feel like she's about to like go break up with somebody or have words with somebody named Brian, <laughs> only for you to realize that Brian <laughs> is her rye, rye bread starter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's like, that's what I get for naming it after a man. I was like, girl, mm, I feel uh, you. And uh. then it just progressed into like her having a hangover from last night's nachos and rosé. And I was like, that's it. I'm in it. I will finish this book in one sitting. Yeah. I am with Rena, start to finish. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> That's me. Um. Anyway, so you would make, you made your lentils and bread, which uh-huh. again would be perfect uh-huh. for this book. Justin, what would you make? An excellent question because I'm tied up on everything carb related in this book. <laughs> I, I'm going to like butcher the names of these dishes, but the what is it? Para, partha? Parath? Parathi? Like really, par, is that the really thin? It's not mm-hmm. non. It's like the layered the like, flat butter bread. ghee. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would for sure make that. I would try my hand at making samosas because I love them so much. And just like potato and meat. I also, this book made me want to like really explore spices. Of mm-hmm. like me too. Getting my own, roasting them, like grinding them down. I was like, oh. It just well, sounds so good. I love chai, and this is like, oh, do I need to go mm. get some like cardamom pods and like Absolutely. brew my own chai? Like that sounds yeah. incredible. And this is like legit chai. We're not talking about like yeah. Starbucks chai latte. No, you know, no. this is legit no chai. This, yeah, I was gonna say this isn't gonna be a sweet syrupy. <laughs> this <laughs> is gonna be delicious. Mm. Yeah. Well, spicy. and you know what? What dish really hit? I mean, all the bread sounded amazing, but the one that I was like, "Ooh, I want to look up a recipe for like how to make this." Is the potato dish she makes the yeah. bajias? Yeah, mm-hmm. I was that intrigued sounded by that. so good because I'm also like a hoe for potatoes. So I mean, <laughs> in general, potatoes, bread. I was, yeah, so I, good. I was so concerned though because they were drunk and deep fat frying these potatoes. <laughs> so I was like, this is not a good thing to do while slightly intoxicated, or for their case, very intoxicated. <laughs> Also, I love the variety of food, too. Like, we got a lot of mm-hmm. lovely, like, Indian cuisine. But then at the end, they make that grilled cheese. And I was like, do I need grilled <laughs> cheese with some chutney on it? Because that yeah. sounds fantastic. It sounded incredible. <laughs> yeah. What I really liked about this book was the fact that you understood, like, what the contest was. Like, they break it down. They're like, look, you know, you're going to submit a a video from home. And then there's a theme for each round. And you're going to do some, um, what was, there was like a farm, farm to table table, theme. There was the picnic theme. I was like, okay, this is all very clear to me. We get to see, you know, uh, Rena and Nadim in each round because it's a couple's cooking contest. We get to see, you know, them in the studio cooking. Like I, I really, loved that I mean a part of it is probably just because like I always want my life to be like a reality television show but um it I was like I can picture this show like I can see every bit of this so that was one of my favorite things about this book yeah for less than 400 pages this book had like so many things happening yes like there is a cooking show there's family drama there's jobs there's pasts and I was like there's more than one fake engagement Right. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, yeah, the family, into it. the family drama. Who? I mean, I'll turn it. I'll turn it over to you guys because I have like so many things that I could say about this book. But I would love to know what your, you know, overall impressions are. Besides us, obviously loving the food. Mm-hmm. 
so I like romance novels and erotica. Like this is my jam, especially this last year during the pandemic. Like this is exactly what my brain needs to just distract, totally take me to somewhere else. I can giggle. Like it, it can be everything I need it to be. And this book particular was lovely because Again, I'm I'm a baker and I love food. I love to cook and so to 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 be able to turn off my brain with also something that is is something that I turn my brain off with. It was mm-hmm. kind of a lovely all the things I ever needed in a book and I've and when you were saying like it's 9.99 I was like this is probably the best 9.99 I've spent in a long time. Like I've spent Oh good. terrible like done stupid things with $10 before, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I was very pleasantly loved this book because it was just really fun a lot of twists and turns and and I really felt for the characters like there was times mm-hmm. I wanted to slap Rena there was other times I wanted mm. to like shake Nadim like so it was just a lot of fun to read yeah nice. I told Kita as I had started this I was like this reads almost like an episode of Gilmore Girls because I was like there's that parental drama she's like i don't want anything to do with my parents they're not getting involved in my life in any way (laughs) i'm going off on my own i'm starting my life and they're trying to set me up and i will say no but even though this guy is perfect and so not perfect obviously but the ideal Um, i don't know he's pretty he's (laughs) pretty good (laughs) Um, i i like blew through this book i was not expecting to uh, I don't know if it was just because we had the deadline, but I was like cruising through it. I very much enjoyed it. It's probably the first time I read a book too, where I was like, people in this book are as obsessed with food as I am. <laughs> I am yeah. just so happy by that. Yeah. So I I very much enjoyed it. I was surprised, I, I, honestly. I totally hear you about it being like an episode of Gilmore Girls too. Although, you know, uh, much less white. Like, let's just make that clear. Uh, yes. Yes. But- yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, the diversity is super, super on point in this book. Fantastic. Um, especially because, I I mean, they were talking about parts of the world that I have no, yeah. you know, connection with. Um, they they come from Tanzania, but um, I, I know Rena mentions it. I forget if Nadine mentions it as well, but that, you know, her family is originally from India and they've lived in like the specific part of Tanzania that happens to have this this mesh of like African and Indian food. And I was like, Oh my gosh, how fascinating. Like I immediately want to take to the internet and like research this region of Tanzania. Like I had no idea. Um, so I thought that was really cool. It, you know what it felt like Gilmore girls wise. It felt like an entire season of a show in one book. Absolutely. Like, Cause mm-hmm. the, the drama. Oh my gosh. Wow. Like I had no idea that there was going to be so much family drama until I was like halfway through the book. And I was like, there's more. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, when you balance out the drama with, yummy foods and a hero who has a foot fetish (laughs) I oh my gosh I was so excited I was like so excited to see that not only does Nadim have a foot fetish Nadim the brown Captain America with the British Mm. accent but they like fully embrace it like Mm -hmm. I loved that because I I don't want to see any kink shaming happening let alone in romance or erotica this is the genre to embrace the kink and Mm -hmm. the fact that it all leads up to you know her doing a a jingly ankle bracelet foot dance for him (laughs) and and i think they do allude to the fact that she does give him a foot job later on too yeah i I was was reading i was like hell yeah yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) okay great (laughs) That was that was a surprise too. I feel like for a book that doesn't have the most explicit sex scenes to have, you know, a character with a prominent kink and like they talk about it and she's given him a foot job. I'm like, okay, I love how sexy this book can be without being like explicitly sexy mm-hmm. too. Yeah, totally. Uh, one thing I appreciate too is like they have an Adim. They, he starts off as this beautiful dark skinned man with a British accent, and then halfway through they're like in bed together. And she, like, touches his stomach, and she's like, oh, your six-pack's gone or something. Yes. And I was just like, 
Yes. We're eating bread. He doesn't care. He's like, can I let my biceps go? She's like, absolutely. I was like, who it's cares so what hot. you look like? Eat the bread. Be happy. Right. Ugh. Yeah. I've never seen a conversation like that in a romance novel. I've never seen that. And I've been reading these books for 12 plus years. And I feel like more recently, there's been sort of a call to action to start writing more diverse male characters like we want to see more more than just like the buff Mm -hmm. chris hemsworth you know kind of character which by the way is super funny that you know they refer to him as captain america because i feel like five years ago it was always chris hemsworth as like the the comparison yeah and then Mm -hmm. now it's it's gone to the other chris so i just want to know like i I feel like what happened like did we Mm -hmm. take sides on the on Captain America versus Thor, but both beautiful. But yeah, I'm with you, Justin. That was such a sweet moment. I was like at first thrown by the fact that she pointed out that (laughs) he like had um, a little bit of, you know, squishiness to him, but it was in like a really sweet way and he fully embraced it. And she was like, I'm into you no matter what you look like. So I want to see more of that, please. Yeah, their their chemistry. There were times where, though, I felt like he was, like, too perfect. And I was waiting for the shoe to drop <laughs> for a long time. Like, it really didn't come until more than halfway through the book, too. Mm-hmm. But I was like, he's so supportive. He's so nice. I was like, this. he's so unrealistic. But their relationship just, like, kept me going through it. And I was like, okay, they're a good balance. Once they brought him down with his, like talking i mean the book can be summed up in like hey just communicate with your family and communicate with your partner Mm -hmm. and And talk about stuff yeah so once they like humanized him a little bit more instead of being this like gushy perfect character i was like oh man he's beautiful (laughs) <laughs> well in a lot of the books i read they do like the two protagonists and they do it one point of view and it's usually like heteronormative male female and yeah. so it's usually like a female point of perspective for one chapter then the male protagonist perspective for the other chapter so it's like i really want to hear what nadim's perspective is but i i also very much enjoyed that it was just this is rena's story and this is her experience but there are times i'm like i just want to know what he's thinking right now <laughs> Yeah, no, I find that too. It's so interesting. I feel like so many, so many contemporary romances written today are told from like a dual perspective. And I usually really appreciate that because I find that a lot of the times it it informs the way that you think about a character that if it was told from a single perspective, you wouldn't necessarily have that point of view. Like the amount of times I've read a romance and thought, God, this guy's a douchebag. And then they cut to his perspective and you're like oh okay now I understand a little bit better like why you are the way you are you know why certain things are affecting you this way then it all it all balances out um but I I mean while reading this too I was like he is so perfect he is so you know I mean there's what's wrong with him because how sad is that too that that's like our train of thought and that's also Mm -hmm. Rena's train of thought like during the book is like what's wrong with him this is too good I mean it's a constant theme throughout Mm -hmm. the story well not only what's wrong with him but like there's no way that he could want me like I'm not enough and that was why I'm like I just I just need you to know your own worth like if I could impress upon any young person in my life and like teach them anything like you are worth everything everybody is worth everything and never sell yourself short like you deserve the kind of love that you want and and like stop it just you're worth it (laughs) yeah no and it's definitely for me you know she's a 31 year old woman and she comes from a more traditional Indian family who you know from my experiences of having friends who have a similar upbringing or you know watching movies like Bend It Like Beckham or you know stories that I've read other other romance novels that's that seems to be like a recurring theme within that culture that mm-hmm. you know they want to set people up um they want to have like a really involved family so i i totally get it i did love that in the end and it comes like really in the end you know that there was basically this big moment of like 
Rena and her sister having to like confront their dad and basically just airing out all the secrets. And the best part about it was that everybody already knew them like about each other. Like the fact that her mom knew that he made a bad business deal that we learn in like chapter five. And he's just now telling them thinking nobody else knows or the fact that her mom is like a card shark, (laughs) which I thought was hysterical. I'm picturing like this group of older women gathering in the back of a bread store playing (laughs) playing poker with each other and everybody else already knew so I mean it really just is like a lack of communication um between mostly family but how that impacts the rest of your relationships I mean we even got like pro employers too like with the top crust guy of like being a down-to-earth boss that was like I let my employees have say, I like reach out and want to help people. I was like, wow, we really got like some levels of characters that you don't really see in books. Like sure, she had horrible luck with jobs, but we Mm -hmm. see this one guy who was like willing to give people a chance and opportunities and allow these women to have these poker tournaments in his (laughs) Like restaurants or whatever. <laughs> I will say I did totally expect the mom to be in this like poker tournament and trying to be raising money for his projects, her husband's projects. Oh, I nice. Because they kept saying that she was donating to charity. And, but, and I was like, that's great. But is she saving money for her husband's <laughs> bad business deal? Like, is this secretly her way of trying to help him? Nah, she's just no. playing no, poker. No, she's just playing poker. <laughs> fantastic yeah well and then there's a great um you know diversity amongst their friends as well Mm -hmm. like I mean we see we see um her her cousin that lives upstairs who identifies as bisexual and what I loved was that there was the mention that her family fully embraced her bisexuality but like they had questions about the time when she dyed her hair blonde right (laughs) and then you know they have another friend in the building uh who is gay they her sister there's like this big third act reveal where she's like yeah my ex-boyfriend or ex-fiance I was with we weren't really that happy but we were also in an open relationship and we'd bring in other couples and everything I was like whoa this is wow this is an ad let alone something to share with your father when you're airing out all your secrets that you used to have threesomes (laughs) and we're bringing in mental health like yes it's just like tackled literally everything I and... actually really liked that, and I wanted more of that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, did you ever feel, and maybe this was just me, but did you ever feel like there was maybe too much? Like it was like a, almost too many storylines that we were like weaving into like the one overall narrative. Would... There was a lot going on. I feel like it was decently paced in a way that that mm-hmm. maybe once or twice I was like, okay, okay hold on, like. Let me pause and, and remember kind of the, the thread of this secret and that secret and that's right. right with that person. But overall, I was like, okay, it is paced enough that, yeah, towards the end when like the explosion of secrets happened, I was like, yeah. okay, is there, are, is there more? Like, I'm, <laughs> this feels like we're just at the surface. Like, um, but I thought it was decently paced. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I also felt like a lot of it was resolved pretty well, too. Like, yeah. I didn't leave mm-hmm. with a lot of questions. I was like, okay, they they wrapped up a lot of things. And I, like Hita said, I was very invested because the pacing was good. I did, mm-hmm. they didn't spend too much time on like one storyline. It did get towards the end. Mm-hmm. And I was like, they're going to have to wrap up this contest very quickly. And they did. That was, and they that did. was my concern was like wrapping up the contest and also kind of making amends between Rena and Nadim. Like uh-huh. I, th- I mean, I was checking the percentage on my Kindle book and it was like 95%. Yep. And yep. I was like, oh shit, like how, how is this going to happen? Like that, if I have any complaints, and this is a book I would absolutely recommend uh-huh. to to newbie and seasoned romance readers alike. But Mm -hmm. my one complaint is that I did feel like the last, like maybe 10 to 15% of the book was like really rushed. Like there was so much happening, so much dirty laundry being aired. And I don't know if I (laughs) completely 
bought into like the marriage at the end. Like that was just like a little too much for me was that she she does propose to him in order for like him to stay and them to be together. And, you know, he ends up being able to stay anyway. But I don't know. It just felt like and maybe this is just my jaded heart that it's they've been dating in secret for the span of like a few weeks and then this whole blow up happens and then she proposes it just seemed like a lot to me yeah my thing was like she bought basically the equivalent of the indian wedding dress she bought that before (laughs) proposing to him and that was my like would you really do that like that's a bold move like i'm not gonna buy it it at the same time that she got her um her anklets to do her little her foot little foot. seduction. <laughs> yes. I felt sorry for the sister who's planning her wedding, and then all of a sudden she's just like, other sisters getting married, we'll plan yours in a minute still. It was literally <laughs> like their wedding dress, or what are they called? Not sorry, but the outfit that they yeah. were shopping for. They yeah. were looking for her sister. Uh, Rena was like, oh, found this. I'm going to get married in the course of like 48 hours. <laughs> sorry, sis. We'll get back to you at the spotlight. Yeah. yeah, and I do, I do get. Oh, and it does take place in Canada. I do yes. like that we're yep. in Canada. Mm-hmm. But um, I do like that. You know, they they she has good intentions. I just I have a problem in general, and I found this from reading romance. Like any time that there's maybe an extra string attached to a marriage, like this is. I've seen the same thing when um somebody proposes to a character because they find out that she's pregnant and you're like okay but are you proposing to her because you want to marry her are you proposing to her because you found out she's pregnant like Mm -hmm. and that's usually something they even say is like I'm not proposing because of the baby I was gonna do this anyway and it's like but now we'll never know right and so that's something that I think um you know I I loved them together and I could see them being together but it just felt maybe a little bit forced to me to make it all happen so quickly at the end of the story. Yeah. And they even say like, Oh, now that my dad's willing to sponsor you, like we didn't have to get married. Like, are you okay? I was like, why did you add that line? Like that and you were already like, married. Too. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's yeah. not even like you were engaged and like, now's the time that you could call it off if you wanted to, like you were already married. I, a lot of it too, wasn't, surprising to me i think the most surprising thing at the end was the sister's revelation of oh i also open our mayor or our, our bed to other couples but like <laughs> the everything else was i totally saw coming because they kind of kept hitting it over the head she kept saying i will not marry i will not marry and i was like okay well she's gonna be the one to ask right. him to marry <laughs> um they kept hitting over the head the visa and the marriage this was a little bit more towards the end and then mm-hmm. blatantly what was it the mom or the aunt who was like oh we had to speed up our wedding so that he could get his visa to stay in the country and i was like yeah that's what's gonna happen here i was like there it is there There's they a brought up <laughs> that lease in the building of the restaurant i was like that's gonna be meant for her yeah, I love that she went into business with her <laughs> sister, but whatever. Um, that was yeah. that was an interesting story. Like, you know what it felt like to me was, um, it almost felt like the sister, like like there was a book before this one where mm-hmm. there was the sister, and like the yeah. sister was like a complete bitch, and mm-hmm. like this was like her redemption journey. Because I was like, we kept hearing about how the sister like never had a great relationship with Rena, and how you know, she she had gone ahead and, like, trashed food bloggers online and then proceeded to be like, I'm going to write a cookbook. I'm going to be, like, a chef. And it's like, all of these things are setting her up to be such a sketchy person that then when we see her start to do things that are nice, I just was like, okay, but what's really behind this? Like, what's right. motive? Like, are you going to, are you going to go behind your sister's back? Like, what? So it just got to the point where I was like, oh, Am I just supposed to believe she's like turned the corner and wants to be a good person and have good relationships with her family? (laughs) But she even still like was riding her sister's coattails. Like sure. She got her own cookbook deal, but she ruined her sister's cookbook the first time. Right. And then her sister became famous because of the uh, contest and opened a restaurant and cookbook with her. And I was like, 
you're also having her sister help make half of your recipes anyway. Yeah. So I just didn't like the sister. Sure, she became like a good support system for Rena, but at the end I was like, no, you got everything you wanted while still being a bitch for most of your yeah. life to her. And she uh. was always um she was always gossiping. Like she'd always come see Rena and it, it almost seemed like her only reason for being there was like to share some gossip or be like, Oh, right. did you hear about this person? And I'm like, okay, is this her making like a valid effort to like, you know, see her sister and bond with her sister, but not really know, know how. how? And I and I guess that's probably what it was meant to be but I just I think because she was built up by the character that we fall in love with so quickly early on in the story and we trust Rena, we trust what she's telling us and she's telling us that her sister has done all these shitty things to her and that they don't have a good relationship I didn't want to trust her because Rena didn't trust her and so that was hard for me to like buy into their relationship like I loved Rena's relationship with her her neighbor and her cousin. I loved her relationship with the friend that's like moved away with the lumberjack. Yeah. Um, I I loved all of them. It was just that sister sister connection that I was having trouble with, and and I like the way it ends in terms of like them airing everything out and just like okay, let's have a fresh start. But I th- everything leading up to that, I was like. Mm, know how i'm supposed to feel about this even the brother too the sister was like my gift's gonna be the best my wedding gift and i was like i feel so sorry for the brother's wife who's carrying twins is in like her (laughs) third trimester has to get on a flight to go see this wedding and this other sister is like i brought them here i'm like why Look, look what i did look what i i think at one point um her uh rena's neighbor friend is it shane um uh-huh. Where the, gay, he's, the he's, one who works at the TV. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or he's dating the guy. He's dating the, the, guy. Like, yep. the TV. The TV guy. Um. But I think at one point he's just like, "Your sister's so like grossly extra," or so he said yes. something about her being extra. And I was like, "That's the perfect way to describe her." Where it's like they clearly don't make any of the right decisions, and like maybe there's a shred of good thought behind them. But really, it's all about them. Like, no matter what they're doing, it's, I brought you the best present ever. See, you're going to love me because I did this. And, ooh, we could have a cookbook together. I mean, I'm the one with the cookbook deal, but you could be in it too. You know, so I just, and and maybe I know that there are people like this. Like, I'm sure everybody has this friend or sibling, but it just was so hard for me to, like, enjoy anything that she had to say um especially because i just loved rena and everybody else so much that i was like why are we giving this sister the time of day (laughs) i didn't really care for her a whole lot i was with rena i didn't trust her for our even till the end yeah i'm with you i'm with you everybody else though i loved um i mean obviously the parents are like very pushy but Uh Again, I think this is largely in part to, like, a cultural upbringing of, like, this is how it's been done for us. This is how we're going to raise our kids. Um, I do – I think there's a line that explains it really well where they – I think it's – no, I think it's Rena who says that, that we don't have daddy issues. We have Indian parents. That shit runs deep. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, she did a great job, too, of incorporating it to be both the – daughters and the sons like seeing it with the yeah. father and like the relationship like it's not just that they're strict to the daughters they're strict to their all of their children mm-hmm. and i did really appreciate that dad at the end too was like i've always wanted to be in the family business and now i have my son with me like mm. the son-in-law and i was like well that's just adorable <laughs> so yeah. i appreciated that moment and the fact that like he accepted nadim too at the end but just like the relationship with Nadim's father and all of that. Oof. And we never really saw him have like no. a turnaround moment either. Uh-uh. So like he no stayed redemption. in his ways. And then we hear about the father of Nadim's ex fiance right. and how, you know, everything that he's done, he's basically been like physically and verbally abusive, like towards his daughter for like uh-huh. so many years. And, you know, Nadim 
being with her kind of fell into like a bad crowd and like also had his job in jeopardy and everything. Um, and, and that was, I mean, it was just like multiple, you know, fathers leading their families and just sort of seeing like what, what that looked like, you know, for the kids, um, because some of them were more, they were all, it seems like physically, like really affected emotionally, mentally. I mean, talk about our main character, Rena. She's like, I go through these depressive states and my sister's mm-hmm. been diagnosed with a mental illness as well. And Nadim is clearly like been like ostracized by his father. It's, it, it was a lot. It was some heavy, heavy shit between families. Yeah. I also like that they highlighted how these men, they're just gossiping. Like they gossip yeah. just as much as anyone else. Like what they're talking about, like, no, that's gossip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> On a closed Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> that was like the thing that would drive me nuts would be when Rena would doubt Nadim. I was just like, consider the source again. Right. You're you're yeah. going to your dad. Like you've told us that you don't have on honest conversations with your dad. Like you've told us that your dad has like older ideas about the way things should be. Why would you, you know, immediately cling to the idea that Nadim is engaged to somebody else or being deceitful in any kind of way when he's been nothing short of perfect. But then again, we, I think modern daters tend to doubt what's great mm-hmm. in front of us like we're looking for something to be wrong but yeah, they're so eager me. to jump in to each <laughs> new thing too yeah mm-hmm. it's who true switching gears ever so slightly who was the one that the mom i think it was the mom or the aunt they're in the cafe at towards the end getting their kebabs and the <laughs> mom was engaged or was going to marry nadim's dad or is the other no, the guys rival dad. the rival yeah it was the rival the, the rival dad Nadim that Shah. Nadim was engaged to his daughter Nadim was engaged to his daughter and in that her daughter Jasmine her dad was the one that almost married the mom yes okay. yes I don't know why all of a sudden I was like all of these stories are the families are starting to intertwine too much and I because can't quite so connected. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh-huh. And that's the thing is like, I would have believed that like people were rivals, like just because they're business rivals. Yeah. But yeah. then it's like, oh, also he was engaged to this girl and now he's engaged to this girl. Oh, also he used to work for this. Oh, by the way, your mom was engaged to him when we were like 17. It's like, holy shit. Okay. I, I appreciate all the details and the foundation that we're building here, but Let's let's get back to the cooking. And he's right. posting a photo from years ago or months ago <laughs> to stir up drama. Just cause. Yes. Oh gosh, yeah. I through all that, I think what it was was I loved the first like three quarters of this book because it was all about the flirting and the cooking and you know them filming this show and eating lots of yummy food. And then when things like got real, real fast, I was like. <gasps> Oh no, but what about the bread? What about Brian? <laughs> Bry the rye. I want to know. Even what's like fourth going of the on? way through, and Nadim's like, Oh, you're back. Don't come in. Don't come in. You're like, Oh, finally, we're going to oh. get something juicy. There's someone else in there. And he has <laughs> and it's all starters, the starters everywhere. And I was like, <laughs> That's the one Who that is like, this guy? warmed my heart. I was like, Okay, he's, that he's perfect. Was precious. I always have such a hard time throwing away starter when, because I, I have a few starters that aren't they're in hibernation right now but um (laughs) that was the hardest part because you do unless you have a recipe ready to use the the discard like you throw away a lot and again it's flour and water but still you're like but it it tried so hard and it did exactly what it needed to do and i'm (laughs) just supposed to throw it away you can only make so many sourdough pancakes or crackers yeah i I love making homemade crackers with the leftover Mm-hmm. Oh my God! Stop it! You're just making me hungry again. <laughs> yeah, I love well, it. Well, and he he raises his uh his sourdough Al. starter that he keeps and names it Al. Yes. And takes it on their weekend vacation. Right. Oh. He likes to be fed, and I I get that. Uh, I need to be fed regularly as well. So. <laughs> oh, same, same yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. I also love the heart. the mom of what was Duncan who yes. definitely was giving me like Molly Weasley vibes when she comes out with her like plump. <laughs> 
frame and her red hair. And I was like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And when they're filming on the on Duncan's mom on their family farm, yeah. that when they're like filming and they go to like take the eggs from the chicken coop, yeah. the dad is like, well, that's Agatha. Like he's like <laughs> naming all the chickens. Like, don't right. poke Agatha. I'm just like, I like, love all the not? names. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, I will say God. I pictured Duncan so differently because I was like picturing him like this little small hipster. And then she just yeah. him as this like big guy who was looking Towering, down on the team. And I was red like, beard. okay, hello, All Mr. Right. Lumberjack. Hello. Yes, please. Yeah. I'll look yeah. at the sunset with you. Yeah. In flannel. But they never, they, they like bring up the story about like, why is there a couch on the porch? They never resolve that. I'm still curious. Like I get why, but like, how did it end up? That was a question. <laughs> That's oh. true. That is true. Well, and I will say, um, you know, uh, Farrah does have like a few more books out. And I know that one of them that I haven't read is called The Chai Factor. Ooh. And The Chai Factor is actually about Amira and Duncan. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That'd be yes, good because yes. they've got some, they've also got yeah. some family dramas That's too. True. Yeah. Well, they're interracial yeah. couple. He's got racist family members. Yeah. Ooh. Exactly. So, I mean, obviously, I guess it's not it's not marked as a series, but technically, this is like the second book within this like this universe. Bubble, yeah, but yeah. This was and the so, first one that she wrote, or the Chai Factor was first. No, Chai Factor came out first. So, okay. you know, I'm sure everything that we hear Amira talking about in in this story of like you know them moving and like them having mm. to deal with like Duncan's like racist brother. Or whatever. I'm sure a lot of that comes up in the Chai Factor. I just haven't read it yet. And I think it, it, you can easily start with this book like we mm-hmm. did because yeah. it's it's not focused. Amira's left town. Like, we're not even yeah. really seeing her that much so much as, like, hearing her on a phone call. So, mm-hmm. yeah, if if this is the one you start with, um, I mean, I definitely want to go back and read Amira's book yeah, because definitely. I'm all for a lumberjack. Mm. Any time of day. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A Canadian lumberjack, please. Yes. Oh, I know. And you know what? Okay. Maybe there's more time on the farm. <laughs> Maybe they get mm. to hang out on the farm and play with more of Agatha and her chickens. Oh, but I just want farm fresh eggs now. Mm. <laughs> and goat cheese? My God. Mm. Mm. Oh, mm-hmm. If only. I did start following Farah on Instagram. I was like, oh, maybe she'll oh post God. some fun recipes well, and food pictures. And from reading her acknowledgments and like the about the author and everything, it seems like so much of this is, I mean, it feels like a lot of this is inspired by her life. Just yeah. at least from yeah. reading what she's written about, you know, moving to Canada and like, you know, growing up there and everything. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I can see where there's been like, some inspiration and she likes to cook or bake Mm -hmm. like so there you go but um I'm excited I kind of want to try some of the recipes at the end of the book um but I don't know if I'm brave enough I believe in you I I was gonna say if if Kita made egg curry I would definitely Mm. try it but it's It's not something that I would make for myself oh I'm definitely gonna make egg curry yeah it sounds so good and I feel like I could do the paratha yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um I don't know. I feel like baking bread is such a commitment. Like, I mean, just the fact they're raising yeah. Yeah. starter, yeah. Like, like children, you know, and naming <laughs> it. And <laughs> it but, is, um, yeah, mm. Mm. it's so worth it, though. And I will say working from home in this like new life that we're in has been beautiful for bread baking <laughs> because bread baking, it's it's time, but not a lot of effort as most like because okay. you'll, you'll start a, a dough you leave it to rest then you come and fold it then an hour and a half two hours come back and give it another fold and then like so if you start it by like at ten thirty, kind of in, throughout the day do your things you need to with it and then you've got bread for dinner it's like perfect so bread can be intimidating but i want to say out loud that everybody can make bread you can do and it. you will want to after yeah. reading this yes. book yes you really just need to know like what to look for and what things should be happening to know mm-hmm. when you need to move on to the next step. That's always but what I, I will call say, Kita. Yes. And rye <laughs> is very hard. Rye is hard oh. to work with. I will say that. So I always do. I did one rye bread and I was like, and we will not be trying rye for a while, <laughs> um, but I'll mix rye into like a multi-grain loaf to get that lovely earthy taste in the, into the bread without having like a, a rye loaf. So 
If anyone's intimidated by Rye, that's fair. Oh my god, even when she made uh, Hala and she was just like mm, casually uh, having a conversation doing a six plat like braid and I was mm-hmm. like yeah. watching them struggle do- doing that on like the Great British Bake Off and I was like <laughs> and she's just casually doing it mid conversation. Yeah, and I think she was doing it like while he was checking her hair for lice too or like giving her like the yeah. hair treatment cuz PS yeah. he gives her lice in this book and I this is one of those stories where I've said it. I want like all the gross, non-sexy things in romance novels because I feel like if couples can make it through that, then it's good, you know? And so, and so the fact that like, he's like, oh yeah, I gave you lice. I'm like, oh shit. Well, this is great. I love it. And then she even mentions Mm -hmm. in a sentence after they have sex that she's like, well, I'm going to go pee because like, I don't want a UTI. And I'm like, (gasps) I have been I asking that. for that. Yes, I yes. have been asking for that in a romance for so long. And, you know, that coupled with, um, you know, all the family drama and his foot fetish and, like, mm-hmm. the immigration, you know, hoopla. I'm like, there is so much mess in this book. And I mm-hmm. love mess. Mm-hmm. So i i enjoyed that a lot um never thought i'd enjoy head lice in a romance but, but... it was so lovely and intimate the way yes. he was like stroking her hair and parting it and like yeah. trying to find all the little knits like he it was just it was an intimate moment that had nothing sexy but it was sexy in in how he i don't know it was beautiful i loved it but also <laughs> yeah like she did a great job of incorporating that into the plot line too of like okay we need him to have short hair so when they see this photo They'll know that it was a time Mm, thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like, and their appointments for him to, like, come back and check her hair out, like, next week, like, we need to have that standing thing so she can't back away, Mm -hmm. and they have to meet. It's like, it's smart. This book is smart. (laughs) I will say, like, there's so many times I've read books where I've been like, wait a second, he just said, like, this is going to happen in three days, and, like, it's happening tomorrow and now it's yesterday like there's so many times I'll read a story and like the timing feels so inconsistent and this one I was like I could map out every Uh single thing that happened in like a planner Uh I could see okay he just said this is happening in four days great we've gone to three days later she's worried something's happening tomorrow okay it's tomorrow and now this is how I was like this is so well timed like I I think it was very well executed, especially because the whole thing only takes place over the course of like what two a months? month. Yeah, yeah. Maybe month. I mean, Maybe yeah. two months. It's very quick. Um, but that being said, so much happens within that time, as we've mentioned. So being able to like plot all of that out, I thought she did a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. Even that contest was so quick too. Yeah. Was like, if this was America, that would be like an entire season of TV. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. God. But um, those Canadians, oh. <laughs> they do it all better. I don't know. We know, but um, they- <laughs> I did like that Nadim would like poke fun at Canada occasionally. Like they talk about like Canadian football and he's like, oh, Okay, so, but, like, not real football, like, soccer football, right? Mm. Like, this is, like, the fake, bastardized version of football that you guys call football. And, yeah, any excuse to, uh, I mean, Canada, oh, oh, and then he says, like, everybody's so sweet because Mm -hmm. they're in Mm -hmm. Canada. Like, we only picked nice people for this competition. And I'm like, yep, I feel that. That's how I feel anytime I watch (laughs) something set in Canada or England, basically anywhere outside of the United Correct. States. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's there's a lot to love. I feel like if you love the Great British Bake Off, if you love, you know, eating, <laughs> perusing food magazines, if you want to learn about maybe a new style of food that like you're less familiar with, because I know I'm not familiar with Indian cooking or um, I think it's, was it East African, East African cooking? Yes. Might have been West East African. Okay. Um, apologies to Tanzania. But um I, I didn't know about any any of the food that comes from there. So I found it so fascinating. But yeah, I think there's a lot to love about this story. Um w- any other notes that you guys have before we move on to the less than steamy segzerps from the novel? <laughs> <laughs> I was I to your point you just made I really appreciate them too like you actually got to see their thought process of how they 
had like a list of ingredients from the farm. You're like, how do we make this work for like our culture? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. We have eggs. Okay. Well, well, and then Nadim's like, well, my grandma used to make this. And like just watching them take like these farm fresh ingredients or ingredients they may not necessarily cook with all the time and be able to tweak them into their dishes, but not do a like, what do they call it? Mesh. Fusion. Uh, fusion. They were like, we don't like, want fusion. We want it to be not. true. I was like, I appreciate you sticking to who you are and like taking it and realizing like, oh yeah, we use this, this, and this for this dish that brings back so many yeah. memories. So I'm like, yeah. It was authentic. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's not what you see in like a lot of, especially like even I, I love to watch Top Chef. That's like one of my go-to cooking shows. And it's always like, create a dish inspired by something, you know, that your family used to cook. It's never make us your family's favorite meal. It's like, oh, I'm going to make mashed potato, um, you know, foam that tastes (laughs) like my grandma's mashed potatoes. I'm like, oh, sometimes like the legit authentic meal itself is the best version that that meal could be. And watching them like figure out how to take a meal that usually takes hours to prepare and try to replicate it in 30 minutes for a picnic you're like that's great i even her charring the corn too much was no issue it was like we'll just turn it over and not serve it and i was like "Ooh, they're gonna like harp on her for that no they still did well yep yeah that was nice actually i kept thinking that like a low point was gonna be like they messed up the cooking show and i was relieved and surprised that that wasn't a part of it it just was like this is either going to work because we're cooking together or I'm going to like have to leave the competition because I won't have a partner. And that was it. So, okay. Well, I know that this didn't have the steamiest of sex scenes. Um, Like we said, not closed door, but definitely door ajar. So um, was there a favorite steamier moment though that either of you enjoyed? This one is so not like the steamiest or sexiest. But they're in bed waiting for the results of the, I think it's the second one, the farm to table one, where they're in bed and she's looking at her phone, waiting for her phone to load or something like that. And it reads like he pushes his penis up against her leg. And I was just like, yeah, okay. And then she's like, (laughs) all right, we can wait to look at the results. And then they just have sex. And I was like, I love that. Just press his penis up against, and then they have sex. Like, we don't care so much about the results. It's just the pressing of the penis. It's the only time we ever got the word penis, I think, in the entire book. Yeah. 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 Uh, Yeah. I really, I had to read a couple Mm -hmm. times the paragraph about the foot job because I was like, (laughs) she she did right that that's yes. what happened because i was like it, it and again i love the no kink shaming everyone was consenting it was beautiful and it was just like the, oh okay here we are he's just a foot job and they're gonna have the happiest life because she's willing and he's willing and it's lovely and go for it <laughs> it didn't explicitly say any sort of foot job it was like she pleasured him like right? she yeah. took down his pants with his with her, her feet. she was very um dexterous with her yeah. feet <laughs> and then she was like and then she pleasured or something like that and i was yeah. like yeah yeah uh, cool great I was How like, that okay work? yeah mm-hmm. that's like you gotta have like toes like thumbs you know <laughs> i mean that's those yeah. are the people who can like climb trees really well yes <laughs> did she take off the bells too it's just like ding ling 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 that would be like a little rough too. I'm just like I yeah, don't know if that's the texture have, I would do want. Do we need some lube on her feet? Like, <laughs> yeah. How is this well, and then my please? thought was like, okay, and then he's gonna go shower right if they're gonna have like other sex because I wouldn't uh-huh. want to have like the foot and then the <laughs> not for me, <laughs> not for me. Good for you, but I would need a sh- like him to shower before getting that anywhere near m- my stuff. You know. <laughs> You know, well, that's yeah, when they made the grilled I... cheese. So grilled cheese break too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So grilled cheese while you shower, kind of thing. Yeah. 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 There you go. Well, I've got like a little scene that um, this is like a kissing scene, and I'm trying to remember. I had some good kissing scenes. Yeah, I think this is the first time that they like make out a little bit, and then she calls it quit. No, this is when they make out and like eventually have sex. But um, this is just getting started give you a little taste of it so um mm -mm -mm. 
His smile widened seconds before his lips claimed hers. And this kiss was like the one on Monday, completely enveloping. She didn't know why she'd waited. She should have come here and kissed him every night since that first kiss. Actually, they should have done this weeks ago. Intense and enthusiastic, he had one hand on the back of her neck and the other rested on her cheek as he all but devoured her whole. She wrapped her legs around his waist and finally ran her fingers over that velvety cropped hair. He moaned in appreciation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I also that was, love that was not a moaning and appreciation. No, that was like, I'm so sorry. That was awful. That was like that was a beast from Beauty yeah, and the Beast. Yeah, that was like a growl. Rumble. Yeah, <laughs> that was my lumberjack one. That's how Duncan would do it. I I love how the phrase like his lips claimed hers is like Mm -hmm. in every romance novel it's probably one of my favorite like ways to describe a kiss like his lips claimed hers like oh what is that like is this a baggage claim yeah the enveloping too they all she always finds a way to like one up each (laughs) makeout session too i was like oh my oh my god like enveloping sounds like one of those like fish that's just like you know, like I, I don't know how to describe that. Like I'm just, I'm. We're video conferencing, so like we can enjoy the visual <laughs> of me opening my mouth wide and just like gobbling up somebody else's mouth. But yeah. I don't think that's what's happening. I I do appreciate the one moment too where she was like, I had to come up for air, and like mm-hmm. we took a breather, and I was like, I appreciate that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's true. I also that's love like the not explicit sex scenes. Then we get to like their going away one like the first time it's like and he just fucked me up against the door and i was like I yeah loved what that. we were yeah. waiting for <laughs> <laughs> and there it is i loved that yeah no it's it's funny where you know as as much sex as they have together and mm-hmm. we you know don't get to see it i feel like it was still like a an okay heat level throughout mm-hmm. because yeah. like i I, they had such great chemistry together, like both on screen as they're filming these videos together and in their dating life. I'm just like, yeah, this couple would like set the place on fire. Like I mm. get it just from hearing about it. So, mm-hmm. well, that leads me into us giving this book a few grades. So we are going to be grading for heart, humor, and heat on a scale of one to ten 10 being the very best that it could possibly be. Um, And we are going to start with heart. What do you think? I'm going to go, are halves, halvesies allowed? Or are we whole numbers only? Yeah, you can halvesie. You can halvesie. You can also give it like a, like a hard or a flaccid six. Like whatever works for you. (laughs) Okay. I like that better. That is fun. fun. Heart, I'm going to give it a, a flaccid eight. (laughs) <laughs> wow see i was gonna give it an add attention eight okay good so right there though yeah 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 maybe i'll give it like a semi erect eight Ooh, and then like ooh, a, a like semi? a penis pressing against your leg uh, eight yeah <laughs> there you go there you go we don't do this enough i feel like we have to add these this into our ratings more often so <laughs> here for it Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with you, though, because I think that there's heart not only between the two of them, but, like, the friends and the family. Like, yeah. there's so much. Even just the love for the culture, too. Yes, mm-hmm. and yeah. food. I mean, like, yeah. love for food is, like, a 12. Like, let's It's be a food-positive book, and I'm here for that. Yeah. It is. Well, there's also, like, a very accepting and, like, immigrant story yes loveliness of like how he's like i don't really know where my home is but i know it's with you and i know it when i taste your food like this is home Mm -hmm. and i just thought that was so lovely so so add attention eight for me well and this is something that i discussed on a recent ig live with nana malone who's a you know best-selling romance author she's been on the podcast before but she was talking about you know how she wants to see she's an immigrant herself and she wants to see like different immigrant stories like in Mm -hmm. romance like it does not have to be that you came and you struggled so hard and like you had to make sacrifices and compromises for this to happen and because she's like that's not the experience that I've had like I've had a very privileged life like as an immigrant and so 
I I kind of like that we got that in this story too. Was like it was a different perspective of the immigrant experience, and mm-hmm. maybe that's because it wasn't American. Maybe that's because mm. it was Canadian. Yeah. So. I don't know. That was maybe my take on it, but that's just because I love Canada. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely makes me want to go to Toronto. Yes. Oh, and everywhere they talk about, but. Yeah. Amen. Okay. How about the humor? I definitely giggled, but was it like a funny book? I would, I think I'd give it a semi six. (laughs) Okay. Honestly, I'm going to agree with you because I. I definitely giggled and there were some moments where I I laughed out loud. Yeah. But I I wasn't reading it for the humor. I was pretty much reading it for the food. Yeah. So yeah. And, yeah. and everything else. But it wasn't Yeah. Would it be a rom com to watch it if they filmed it? I would think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the book didn't necessarily scream humor to me. Yeah. And I yeah. you know what? There were definitely moments where I was like giggling aloud. Um mm-hmm. so I think for me I might go a little bit higher. I might do like either let's say a hard six or <laughs> a limp seven. A limp. <laughs> well, I don't know why that sounds worse than flaccid. A wet noodle seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like is a limp seven worse than a hard six? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> These are I the don't questions. Know. Yeah, but I did, like I said, I feel like the first half of the book was, like, really enjoyable all around. Like, Mm -hmm. super fun, super light, super yummy. Um, And then just, like, the closer we got to the ending, that dread started to build within me. I was like, (laughs) oh, my God, there's so much happening. How is this going to work out? (laughs) But um, they did, obviously. It's a romance. So... Last one is the heat level. So I'm interested to hear how this one works out. Yeah, there was decent heat for sure. But again, I think because it was a lot of closed door, like erotica to it, it it's not as, as hot and spicy as yeah. as I think it, it could have leaned into it a lot mm-hmm, more. And mm-hmm. But but the chemistry was always there. And then the, like there was always that desire between them and you could feel it and, and when they even weren't making out with each other, like there was ways that they engaged with each other through their food that was very intimate and, and lovely and, and sexy. And so how do I rate this? I know because like, I don't want to give people a false idea of the heat level thinking like, I'm going to go in to read this and people are going to be like fucking with food all over them kind of thing, (laughs) you know, because it's not, unfortunately that story that's not what we <laughs> there's get there's not really any food play it was, in here it was no. definitely sexy but it wasn't hot no this was like a pg-13 rom-com sex absolutely like, i could watch it with my girlfriends i could watch it with my partner but like am i am i gonna get all spicy because mm-hmm. of it i don't know probably, probably no not. nudity probably yeah. just like some implied you know uh, gestures or <laughs> yes. movements but right. yeah no I my like go to uh parameters when thinking about heat is and this is just my personal subjective take is like I like to think if there's sex on the page it's a five so like anything that's above a closed door romance is at least a five to me like oh. we've made it and so saying that this one is like Dora Jar, <laughs> I'm like, this one might might be just a five for me. It might just uh, be like, we've just cleared the door, but uh, we haven't really moved beyond the doorway. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have moments where of reading it where I started to like fan myself because I was getting no. hot. It was definitely just like, oh, yeah, okay. I mean, I think the fucking up against the door was the closest to, and I think it was just because of... They I think she that. actually said, fuck yeah. up against he the door. Me again. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. it was like, fuck me senseless, too. And like, right. that was the and most explicit. So, yeah, I'm, I would say a, a flaccid six. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I always try to think of heat as if I was reading this on the bus, would I be blushing right now? Mm. Or like on the train or I'm on some public transit. Would I be blushing if reading this scene? And there was like one or two where I was like, hee hee. Okay, um, but it was never like I can't read this in public, right. kind of thing. So yeah, I think I agree that it, it's it's a pretty soft six. I can't go off of that scale because I 
will unabashedly read literally anything in public at this point. Mm, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I I read Fifty Shades in public, so yeah. it's not that I won't do it, but I'll be bu- blushing for sure and giggling. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some some teeing perhaps. <laughs> yes. Tee. <laughs> this book didn't make me like want to put it down and look at Nate and be like, "What are you doing right now?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, which yeah. is how to gauge all my books, you know. I've got mm. I've got books for that for that heat level if you want <laughs> oh, them. So oh, yes, oh yes. <laughs> my favorite was uh, going irresistible you when we read that one. Yes. and they were having sex while he was playing like PlayStation or something, and I was like, yes, it would never happen. Nate would never like look away from the TV. Like if I was initiating anything, it was, I hope he doesn't listen. He could be listening now. And he'd be like, okay, that's great, sweetie. Daddy's playing his game. I, yeah, no, like, he doesn't call stop, himself that. Stop getting in the way. I want to reach the next level. Hundred <laughs> percent. I was like, get yeah. on my level. He's like, go away. <laughs> okay, cool. cool. Coo-coo, coo-coo, I do. Coo-coo. That is one of the things I do remember about Irresistible You and that series. By the way, um, Kate Kate Meter is the author, and it's a hockey series set in Chicago and. Oh my gosh, I went on to read the rest of the series and she's now written like a follow-up series that's like the oh. next round of rookies who play Ooh, for that team. Okay. Yes, I am in love. So like anybody who's looking for like their next hockey romance, sure. super great. Check out Kate Meter. But um, yeah, anyway, from from baked breads to, uh, you know, <laughs> hockey, hockey romance. I, I love it all. <laughs> Classic. Yeah, I know. Well, okay, so now knowing that Kita is like a seasoned romance reader, and Justin, you've gone from reading hockey romance with me to some more LGBTQ romance mm-hmm. to now, um, you know, accidentally engaged. I'm wondering, like, what's what's next on each of your romance reading journeys? Is there more romance in the future? And if so, wh- what do you think's next for you? Mm, def- well, I definitely want to read The Chai Factor. That's yeah. going to be high on my list. And then I'm currently making my way through this Sanctuary Sound series of, I want to say it's Jamie Beck. Um, oh, okay. A lot of fun. Just like they, I see now, there's a few of them that I'm I'm reading, but I, I've been enjoying Jamie Beck a lot. And then I've also been doing a lot of Melissa Foster. <laughs> okay. She's a lot of fun. So Love it. Yeah. So you steer more towards like contemporary... Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm, awesome. Definitely. Justin, how about you? A great question. So uh, I'll probably continue to dabble in some LGBTQ romance novels. My question, though, is if I'm in the mood for more romance novels like this, how do mm-hmm. I decipher upon looking further, like, if one's going to be more on the irresistible you side or if one's going to be more on the accidentally engaged side. Cause the, I feel yeah. like if I'm looking at books, they both all fall or they both fall under romance. Right. So how do you oh, decide sure. if you get mm-hmm. one that's more erotica or more one that's romance novel? So that is definitely when you want to turn to bloggers and podcasters or even um, goodreads.com. Mm-hmm. I mean, sure. that's going to be the place where when people do post their reviews, there a lot of them will especially when it comes to romance indicate the heat level or oh, say okay. like this is like um it, here are some of the trigger warnings you might expect like i think people have become very proficient in their reviews both on instagram and I say, on bookstagram is big now yeah yeah i mean oh. so many of the books that i i find that i'm like ooh i'm really into that people will include little references about like here are some things to expect or like if you're really into this trope or this kink or this pairing that you'll love this book. So I think a lot of a lot of reviewers will give great indications of what you can expect when reading. Yeah, I'm definitely interested like in the chai factor and looking more into uh Farah's books too because yeah. she's great. Like just the way her language yeah. and the ease of it and Honestly, I loved learning about the Indian like culture and Me stuff too. more. It was awesome. I very much Plus, enjoyed it. Honestly, I was so surprised at how much I enjoyed it. I 
I was too, like, I was really excited to read this one. Like, I'd had it on my list of books that I wanted to read because I was like, oh, that sounds like everything I like, like fake dating, cooking. But I really enjoyed it. Like, I, and I really want to go read The Chai Factor, especially wondering is there going to be a chai recipe in the back of yes, that book? Yes, right? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Because I trust Farah and her food knowledge. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> definitely. And when I was reading, I was like, she knows her bread. Like, yes. she knows exactly yeah. what she's talking about. She gets it. She's raised a bri the rye more than once. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, my friends, we've come to the end. And I'm so glad that you joined me for this. And honestly, I feel like... I know your podcast is all about cooking for reels with movies, but I feel like there needs to be a special episode or bonus episode or something having to do with this book or some other yummy love romances. I think that's a great idea. We could easily tie in. Uh Yeah. Plus, I just want to see all the results, like the fruits of your la- of your labor, not mine, because I'm not <laughs> making it. <laughs> I will say, and if like Farah, don't at me here, but Trader Joe's <laughs> does a great like Indian cuisine type thing. Like if you don't want to go through the labor of cooking everything from scratch, theirs is pretty good. Mind you, I'm just a simple white guy who doesn't really know how to make Indian food, <laughs> but it tastes spices? good. What is this? Well, my friends, this has been a delight, and I so look forward to listening to your podcast. And uh, now that we're all sufficiently hungry, um, you know, I think it's time that we all go cook something tasty for uh-uh. Din Din. <laughs> or get Yum. some Indian takeout. Oh yeah, no. Let's (laughs) let's be real. Like that's probably what's going to (laughs) happen. Yeah, yeah. But thank you again for coming. It's been so fun chatting with you. Thank you so much for having us. This was so much fun. Thanks so much for listening. Boobies and Newbies is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow Boobies and Newbies on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Boobies Podcast.